Let's look at some of the drying systems used in the food industry. A very common type is a tray or a cabinet dryer. In this case we have a fan, uh, heater coils and uh, trays on which food is placed. So as the fan operates it pulls in the uh, fresh air from the outside. The air goes over the heater coils, it is heated and then through the trays where the moisture transfers from the food into the air and the moist air coming from the trays is uh, either exhausted or part of it may be recycled back with the fresh air. Again note that this is a batch system. A variation of a cabinet dryer is the use of vacuum. In, in this case the trays are placed inside the drying cabinet and the uh, cabinet is subjected to low pressure by use of a vacuum pump. The vacuum pump pulls the air from the cabinet dryer through a condenser where the moisture coming from the product is condensed. In case of a vacuum dryer the drying is accomplished at lower temperatures than in case of cabinet dryers where we have atmospheric pressure. Uh, by using lower temperatures we can get improvements in product quality. Tunnel dryers are uh, commonly used for drying products like grapes and also for prunes. In this case there is a long tunnel. Uh, food is placed on carts and we have heated air that is blown through the product. Now if the direction of airflow is the same as the movement of the product then this type of a dryer is called a concurrent flow dryer. The heated air is exhausted and the carts containing dried food exit from the tunnel dryer in a sequential manner. It may take up to 36 to 48 hours for foods such as prunes to dry in this type of a drying system. Another variation of a tunnel dryer is where the air flow and product flow are in the opposite direction. This is called the counter current tunnel dryer. So it is very similar to the dryer we saw before except in this case the movement of air in, is in the opposite direction. Normally when you operate a drying system in a counterflow manner you get improved energy efficiencies. Fluidized beds are often used when the solid foods are of smaller size and easier to fluidize. In this case the food is placed on a porous plate so that air can be blown from underneath. Now the, the velocity of the air is such that the food particles are essentially lifted slightly from the porous plate during the drying process. This creates very good contact between the air and the food. The convective heat and mass transfer coefficients are high in the case of a fluidized bed. Fluidized bed systems are often used for granular foods. Spray dryers are commonly used to make food powders. For example, uh, we can convert milk into milk powder. In a spray dryer, the liquid food is converted into a spray at the very top of the chamber by using spray nozzles and also there is a entry point for the heated air. The air may be exhausted from the lower part of the chamber and as those droplets fall inside this chamber the water present in the droplet evaporates and the solid particles are collected at the bottom. Spray dryers operate in a continuous manner and inside a spray dryer we see examples of both constant rate period of drying as well as falling rate period of drying.
Another type of a dryer that is used in the food industry is a freeze dryer. In this case, we use a chamber which is maintained at low pressures. Inside the chamber, there is a plate uh, that provides the necessary heat and product that is pre-frozen is placed on the plate and due to the low pressure that is present in the uh, chamber, ice inside the food sublimates into vapors. By sublimation, we mean that ice converts directly into vapor and does not melt into liquid. So one needs fairly low pressures inside the freeze dryer. The freeze dryers, because they operate at very low temperatures, we obtain products with superior quality. However, the freeze dryers can be quite energy intensive because not only you need low pressures inside the chamber, but the food itself has to be pre-frozen. So the energy requirements of first freezing the food, then exposing it to low pressures, and also these, these types of systems are operated in batch or semi-batch conditions. The overall cost of freeze drying can be quite substantial.